Hi! Welcome to our Saturday. Um, it's lovely and sunny out there. So we're gonna make a, a salad that is like a room temperature salad. So of course like we're roasting things. We don't necessarily feel like roasting things on a day like today, but we do feel like a salad and also, you know, got these in our veg box. So gotta use them somehow and roasting them is a really, really good way. So today we are making spiced carrots with tabbouleh. Lots of different ways you can make tabbouleh. So today I'm gonna to be using spinach leaves, but I have also used um, carrot tops before. So in the picture, it's actually carrot tops, but you can, it's like a really versatile recipe, so you can mix it up. Okay, so let's see who's here today. So Sarah, Lara, Karen, Colleen, uh, another Karen, Arouge, that's a lovely name, that's a lovely name, good afternoon, good afternoon, Justine, um, Art Chef of the Future, uh, Denise, Louisa, thank you so much for being admin again whilst you are still in this country. Um, good morning, good morning, or good day, I should say good day to you all, because in some parts of the world it's afternoon, some parts of the world it's probably night time, I don't know, it's gonna be somewhere, so if you are there, Good day, good day to you. <laughs> um, Annie, thank you for joining us again. Okay, so this is the lovely thing that we're gonna be making today. And I was inspired to make this. Sorry, my, my computer is just having a little bit of a meltdown. So let's see if it, yeah, there we go. Right, okay, there it is. Um, just take, took a little bit of, a uh, bit of time. It was kind of like winding winding up to be able to do it. Um, so this is the dish that I'm making today. We've got these ro lovely roasted carrots. I've kept them whole. I have kept them whole. Um, so I purposefully have chosen quite thin ones, quite slim ones, so that they don't take an absolute age to roast. Um, so this is great if you get these like, you know, really, really fine like tapered uh, carrots. And it just kind of looks pretty. It look, it does look very, very pretty, I think, doing it this way. Um, and then, as I said, we've got the tabbouleh on the bottom. And, okay, so, uh, I don't know if any of you guys are uh, cooking along at home, but please do, please do let me know if you are. Um, super easy one today, actually. Fairly simple. Fairly simple, really. Um, but it's just, you know, some really nice flavours coming together. So, right, let's get started. Justine says, where's the rainbow? I was trying to feed Colleen. Well, that's kind of cheating, asking for the rainbow. <laughs> You've got to find it. You've got to tell me what's underneath it. So I'm not helping at all, otherwise I'll get into trouble. It will be like I'm playing favourites. I'm not going to do that. Um, oh, Lynn, thank you. Thank you for saying good morning, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Gloria, Gloria, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Sarah says, good morning. Finally, a bit of sunshine. Good, good, good. Um, okay, so Grant isn't going to give us jokes or puns today, uh, but we are going to give him lots of love and lots of hugs um, across the miles. Um, so Denise says, yay, we get to see, you will actually get to see some of them, not all of them. <laughs> uh, Justin said, Joss is cooking along. Okay, good. Food for when you get home. That's a good deal. Okay, Sarah says, it's fresh kale. Okay, yes, absolutely. So you can use fresh kale instead of the spinach, but... Um, it either needs to be the young kale that is quite delicate, um, or you can use like the older, chewier kale, uh, but you definitely need to make sure that it is off the stems, so remove the leaves from the stems, and then I really do think that you should um, put them in some hot water um, just to kind of soften up a bit. Otherwise, I think, you know, with, with raw kale, if it's the older, chewy stuff, you can be, like, chewing on it for, like, ages, and, you know, it gives, like, your jaw, like, a really good workout, <laughs> but that isn't necessarily what we're looking for from food, so, uh, yes, that's what I, um, that's what I, uh, suggest, okay, so, uh, George, thank you for joining us again, um, and let's get on to our recipe. So we'll come over here and we have all of our ingredients for today and we will start with our carrots. So we've got around 500 grams of carrots there. Doesn't have to be exact at all, just ballpark. 
Um, and then we're going to add some of our caraway seeds and our cumin seeds, our oil and our salt. So we've got all of those here. I've purposefully put them in this bowl because this is going to be good for pouring um, the oil over so we can capture the oil, any of it that comes on the bottom, we can, we can pop it back up again. So, um, yeah, so Colleen has guessed that underneath the uh, rainbow is a carrot. You are almost right, almost right. You're like so close. Uh, Sarah says it comes in a bag already chopped. It's organic, no idea if it's young or not. Okay, so Sarah, the way that you can tell whether your um, kale is young or not is how thick it is and chewy it is. So basically when our leaves, when our leaves are younger, um, they tend to be um, quite quite delicate, quite light, and you can chew them, and you know you can chew them quite easily. And then as they get older, they become a bit more chewier, um, a bit more um, chunkier. Um, the stems will be be bigger as well. And so in that case, you will need to blanch them to use them in this recipe. Otherwise, you'll be chewing the salad forever. So. Okay, right, let's get on with our carrots. So, uh, I've purposefully chosen the thinnest ones that were in the bunches of carrots that I had. There we go. Justine has guessed that it's a pepper under the rainbow. No, it's not a pepper. I will have to apologize for my drawing skills if it's a bit too difficult because of my drawing skills. So as I said, I've got uh, ones that are as thin as possible because I'm hoping that we can cook this within the time that we've got with each other. Um, and that's why we're also doing the carrots first. So this can be served at room temperature as well, as I said. So the carrots aren't gonna be aren't gonna be warm. So just to say, you can always like do them in advance. Okay, uh, so Sarah says, so just put it in a pan for a couple of minutes with a bit of water. Will it f uh, change the flavor a lot? No, it won't. It won't. Um, uh, and yes, yeah. So just put it in a pan of uh, hot water, uh, and then you can feel it as well. You can feel whether it's softened enough. Uh, Denise has, has guessed that it is a carrot with attitude. That is a very good guess, but not right. Um, okay. And oh, Sarah. So, sorry, Sarah said, uh, "Will replacing the kale with the spinach change the flavor of the dish?" Not much. Really, really not much because we're going to put loads of like other flavors in it. You know, we've got our lemon juice here, um, and then we've got our spices as well. Um, so they, um, sorry, I was just going to go and get some some garlic. Uh, so you know, and then we've got the garlic as well. So all of those flavors, um, and we've got our mint as well. This mint is really, really strong, so it's really not going to change it much. George said, I've only had speedy with parsley, so I'm quite excited to see spinach being used again. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those recipes that if you don't have the exact ingredients, you can swap and change it around. So let's um, start off our carrots. So I'm going to add some oil to them. And this will allow them to cook quicker because oil um, heats up to a high temperature. That's one of the reasons why we use it in cooking. Um, so I'll just splash some oil on there and then we'll need some salt for the outside as well, just to impart a bit more flavour. But these, these carrots are really, really flavoursome. These came in my veg box the other day. And then we've got our caraway seeds and I absolutely adore caraway seeds, really, really adore them. So around one teaspoon of caraway seeds. There we go, and then we've got our cumin seeds here. And actually, I don't know if this, this might actually help you guys, I always label on the top, I always label on the top because I've got a drawer that I pull out and it just takes so long just to like pull them out. So uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I like to do. It makes life a lot easier, a lot easier. Okay, so we've got our caraway seeds there and then our cumin seeds. So if you guys have never tried caraway seeds before, I really, really recommend um, that you do. They, they go so well with carrots, really, really well with carrots. I think quite often like we have things like carrots in a very kind of boring, monotonous way, uh, but um, they're great for like these, these types of spices. They're really, really great for spices. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn these over. 
just making sure that they're covered in the oil as much as possible. I didn't use a huge amount of oil, so you know I do need to mix them around. Um, uh, okay, so Faviola has guessed the closest so far. If that helps, that might that might help you. But there you go. That that's that's a um <laughs> a clue. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that we've got all of these seeds in the tray. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna give my hands a quick rinse, guys. It's an oily today. Uh, oh, Sarah says a couple of carrots are a bit soft. Well, I would just leave them out then, if they're a bit soft. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop these into the oven and I'm just making sure that these guys have enough space. Okay, so we don't want them all crowded. We don't want them like that. All right, we've got enough space here and that's why I'm using a nice wide pan because the more space they have, the quicker they'll cook. There we go. Right, there we go. So that's all we need to do with our carrots for the moment. And I'm gonna bring this closer because you guys might need to see what this is. There we go, does that help? Okay, so what, can I, can I put it back down now? <laughs> uh, Sarah says uh, that the carrots that are soft um, need using when it not taste nice. Um, and they are chunkier, should I cut them in half? Yeah, so if they're chunkier, uh, then cut them in half. Try to get all the carrots around the same size, if you can, which I know is a bit difficult, because some, mm, sometimes they come in like all shapes and sizes. Um, so yeah, you could just split them down the half. Split them half, <laughs> in half. Down the middle, in half, sorry. It is a Saturday, it is a Saturday. Um, yeah, and, and cook them that way. I mean, it, the thing is like, if they're a bit soft, I would eat them, I would eat them, but I get into trouble with this because I'm a chef and I've eaten like a lot of stuff that other people would be like, nah, you know, cause like quite often we would do that. Like we go into the kitchen one day and someone had left something and we were like, we don't even know what that is. And so we'd have to like taste it. So I'm really brave when it comes to stuff like that. And not, I know not necessarily everyone else is. So anyway, George, is our winner today of our rainbow competition. It's, well, he said it's a parrot carrot. I thought it was a carrot parrot. <laughs> but it's probably the same thing, a carrot parrot or a parrot carrot. So that, <laughs> let me bring you guys overhead. There we go. And then, then you can see more. I know you got some of you guys that might be looking at this on a, on a small phone, so you might not be able to see so well. But that is my parrot, who is also a parrot. <laughs> Right, there we go. Okay, right, on to the next part of our recipe. So we've got a quarter of a cup of millet here. You can use pretty much any grain with this. You can use bulgur wheat. Bulgur wheat is, is what is traditionally used with tabbouleh. But um, you can use something like quinoa as well. Um, and so I'm using millet here. You could use, also use bulgur wheat actually. So loads of those different types of grains you could use, uh, which gives you a bit of flexibility because quite often like these like random grains are things that end up in the back of our cupboard and you know, we use them once and then never again. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, pop this into my, uh, my saucepan here and then add about twice uh, the amount of water. and then just pop that onto the hob. And because it's quite a small amount, it probably shouldn't, um, it sh sorry, I was just reading the comments. Um, it probably shouldn't take very long to cook because we've got quite a small amount. So I'll just pop that on the hob, uh, bring it up to boiling point and then bring it back down to a simmer. Okay, and now let's get our other lovely ingredients over here. There we go. So, let me just see if you guys have any comments. Uh, Sarah says, I have quinoa, millet, and buckwheat. What is best? 
any, any, absolutely any. Um, I would say like for now, do one. Um, I think in the future, trying a, a combination film would be really, really nice, really nice. Um, but any, any. I would say go with the one that's quickest today, just to like make life easy for yourself. Um, okay, so Kara's saying that she loves it. That's good, good, good. We've given you another recipe then. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So I said, did you say buckwheat? Yes, buckwheat, any any kind of grains like that. Um, okay, so yes, so sorry. Um, I think that Joss and Justine were just talking about the uh, oven temperature. So I have popped the oven temperature there, which is 200 degrees Celsius, 390 degrees Fahrenheit, gas mark six. Um, and I've actually put my carrots in the top of the oven, uh, on the top shelf of the oven, uh, because they can actually take that quite uh, powerful heat. Um, so, there we go. Right, okay, so, uh, Sarah says, my carrots are cut in half. Is it best to put flat side down on the tray? Yes. Yeah, so, um, the bigger of its area that is hitting that heat, you know, because because the pan will be the hottest rather than the air that surrounds it, um, then you will get things to cook quicker. You will get things to cook quicker. Okay, so on to the salad part of our recipe. Um, and so, as I said, we've got our baby spinach here, um, and you can swap this out. Traditionally, it is used, uh, tabbouleh is with parsley. Um, but it doesn't have to be. So, you know, sometimes like, uh, sometimes you can't really get hold of big bunches of um, of herbs in this country unless you want to spend a lot of money. So you go to a lot of supermarkets and they're like tiny, tiny, tiny um, packets of herbs. Um, and with a dish like tabbouleh, you need quite a lot of parsley. Um, and so that can be a bit expensive, whereas with baby spinach, it's a bit more affordable. Um, and then over here we've got our mint leaves. So I've got like about a handful. Um, I've got about a handful of mint leaves here. I'm not going to use any more than this because this is black mint that the lovely Jeff uh, grew for me. Um, and it's very, very powerful. It's really, really strong. So I know from experience that I don't want any more than this. But remember that this, this is a recipe that you can make and then you can adjust. So you can taste it and then adjust. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, Sarah says, can I use frozen mint or dried mint? No, sorry babe, you can't, uh, you can't. It, uh, dried mint is just gonna be a bit kind of twiggy, um, and there are certain times that I would use dried um, herbs rather than fresh, um, but no, with this one you do need fresh. So if you don't have fresh mint, um, then you will need just some sort of other fresh herb some other fresh herb would be your best substitute. So actually, let me just like come over here and then I can talk to you guys about dried or fresh herbs. Um, so you'll have seen in some of my recipes, I do use dried herbs, but it took me quite a while to do that because I never really liked them. I never really liked them. So I didn't like that kind of texture that you get uh, when you're using dried herbs. But there are some times that I do like to use them. So say, for example, if I'm making um, a raw cheese um, or vegan cheese, then yes, putting dried herbs in is better than fresh because fresh, um, you won't get so much flavour out of it and you want the flavour to be quite intense when you make something like that. Um, and also, if you're putting uh, fresh herbs into something that's kind of like moist and wet, then they don't last that long either. Um, so I would definitely use dried herbs in that. Sorry, the sunlight is just like shifting and changing. So I hope it isn't affecting the, the um, your view too much. Okay, um, and then the other time I would use dried herbs is when I'm making spice mixes. So when I made it the spice mix last week, I think it was, with the black bean stew, I put dried herbs in there because of course like this is a, um, a herb, uh, spice mix and we can't put fresh herbs in there um, because you know they would just last they just won't last so that's why I use them minimally only when um, we really need to just take that lid off bring that down okay right Annie says black mint I've never heard of that sounds nice it is very nice very nice very strong Joss says frozen coriander no we can't use frozen coriander either um 
So Colleen says, what's the best way to freeze fresh herbs, wet them first or chop them? Um, so I think, yes, you would have to chop them up and then you could put them into ice cube trays and then use them like that. But I wouldn't ever use them in this fresh way where we're making a salad, you know, so we need these fresh herbs. I would only use those um, chopped and frozen herbs in like a stew or a soup or, you know, that type of like wet dish. And Delina says good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Khan says, can we use star anise instead of caraway seeds? So you could use star anise, uh, but I would be careful with it because star anise is very, very strong. Um, and you would need to grind it. You would need to grind it so that it imparted that flavor on our carrots. So star anise is great, is, is great when it's whole, when we put it into something that's wet. So whether that's a stew or a soup, a curry, or kombucha, which by the way, I recommend to everybody. Um, pineapple and star anise kombucha is um, so it really imparts flavour onto something that's wet when you pop it in whole. But when it's something like this that is dry, you're gonna need to crush it, you're gonna need, you know, the smaller particles of a spice. Um, so whether that's spice seeds or ground spice, either one, you're gonna need one of those. Okay. Uh, let's get on to making uh, the rest of our dish here. Okay, so um, as I was saying, like we've also, we've got this mint that I'm using, and then we've got tomatoes, a few tomatoes, and I've actually got some radish, but you guys can use cucumber if you want. I really like using radish in this because I think it gives another colour to it, another beautiful colour, and I think radishes are quite underused in this country, and you can buy them very cheaply. So um, let me just grab my chopping board. And there we go, we pop that down on, on our counter. And so I always put one of these down on the counter just so that my board doesn't move around um, too much. Okay, there we go. Um, so with our, with our spinach or our parsley or you know whatever green that we're um, using as the dominant green, in this recipe we can either finely chop it or um we can just pop it in one of these things which makes life a lot easier but if you don't have one of those don't worry absolutely don't worry um so george suggested uh, fennel seeds as a nice replacement for caraway seeds yes yeah that's a really really good idea fennel would be lovely but i must say and I'm going to have a serious conversation with you guys now, which means that we come to this screen. This is when I want to say something really, really serious. Try caraway seeds. Basically, try caraway seeds. They are so lovely. Really, really, really lovely. Um, so there are substitutes and it's still going to be nice, but there's this special like combination that happens between carrot and caraway, which is just and caraway is really, really good in sauerkraut as well. Really good in sauerkraut. Um, I think what else it's good in. But yeah, I'm a really, really big fan. So um, sometimes I like just making like crackers with caraway seeds and it's really, really lovely. Really lovely. So there you go. That's a lecture over for you there. <laughs> Let's get on to our salad. So I am going to use my chopper attachment. Oh, Laura Louise, good morning, good morning, and Francesco and Jim, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so we have our spinach here, so I'm just going to pop this into my chopper attachment of my blender, but I'm not going to overwhelm it, so I'm not going to pack it tight, because it's going to make it a bit difficult for it to move around, so I've just put maybe a third, a third of the spinach in there, and I'm going to pulse it. Amandine, good morning, good morning. Well, good day, good day to you. Um, I'm just going to pulse it, and the reason why I want to do that is because I want to be very controlled about it. I don't want to blend it into a puree. Okay, so we're just going to pulse it. said before these things are great for anybody who has an RSI or has mobility issues or um, just really wants to do things very quickly like me 
Okay, there we go. So I'm just pulsing it until it's in bits like this. So as I said, as I said, we don't want to make it into a puree. We're not looking for spinach puree. We are looking for it kind of being shredded, I guess. Finely chopped. Finely chopped. So this is our serving bowl, so we can just directly mix it into our serving bowl rather than using up another bowl. So we'll just pop in a little bit more of this. There we go. And again, pulse it. You do need to be a little bit patient with it. But those of you who have a food processor, you know, if your food processor is bigger, you may be able to just do all of this in one go. And then we'll pop our last bit of spinach into here. And... And, 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 and our mint. Okay, so that does have to go in there now. Let me just make sure. There we go. The last bit of mint can go in there. And again, pulse it. And I'm always looking and seeing how it's doing so that I don't over blend it. actually makes a really really good point she says i think i'll have to stop at garden centers to get fresh herbs um i have just recently started growing herbs because i'm really sick of the supermarkets um just having very limited herbs so we've got some really really good herbs um out back now um so things like nasturtium and sweet mace I just got recently, which tastes like aniseed, which is one of my favorite flavors. Um, of course, we've got this black mint, we've got some really lovely rosemary, we've got some chamomile, um, we've got some wasabi as well. So actually, in garden centers, you can find some really, really amazing herbs. So if any of you guys are in London, actually, there is um, a garden centre called Sunshine Garden Centre, which is the nicest garden centre I've ever been to. Like, everyone says hello to you. It's really, really lovely. Um, and they have, they must have about 100 different types of herbs. They must have 100 types of different herbs. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, so in there is just our spinach and our mint. And hello, hello, hello to Doug, and sending you lots of love and hugs as well today. Um, okay, so, uh, and Justine, you know, you say which herbs are the best ones? Well, really, the best ones are the ones that you like. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> I don't mean that in like a chippy way. I mean, yeah, it really depends on what you like. Um, okay, let me just have a look at my millet, see how that is doing. So it's getting there, just needs a little bit more time because it's still a little bit, a little bit hard, a little bit hard, maybe just another five minutes. I'm just gonna add a bit more water to that and pop it on. And just checking our carrots as well. So our carrots are looking pretty, pretty good. And I've got a fork here. So I'm just going to check. Oh, wow. They did not take long at all. So that's it. That's as long as we want to cook them for. Because we want them to still be, like some of the bigger ones, they can still be a little bit, a little bit tough. But that's it. That's it. Gosh, guys, that was like, they were not in the oven for very long at all. Right? 
So now they're done. Check it out browning. Beautiful. That's good. Um, so we, now we can just move them out of the oven, turn the oven off. Boom. Easy, right? Oh. Right. Okay, so back to our salad. Um, so let's get our garlic ready. So you guys can t decide how much garlic you want to put on it. That is absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Ah, oh, Karen says my favourite herb is rosemary. I love rosemary tea. Oh, rosemary tea is so lovely. Um, Karen said growing loads of different herbs in my garden. Always keep mint in a pot as it will take over. Yes, that's a very, very, very good point. Uh, Justine says I meant what are you cooking with mostly? I did have mint, but I killed it. To be honest, I cook with loads of different herbs. Absolutely loads of different herbs. Um, I think my favourite is lovage. So if you can get that from a garden, I think that's great. Lovage tastes very kind of, it tastes like a curried celery. It's very potent, has so much flavour to it. It's really, really lovely. Um, so that's one of my favourites. Um, I've also got bronze fennel out the back, but recently it got devoured by um, aphids. So we've got a bit of an aphid problem in the garden at the moment. So the nasturtium had a load of black aphids in it as well. Um, so we're trying. But um, I don't know if any of you guys are in London, so I can't can't keep track. Um, but if you want the details of the Sunshine Garden Centre, just let us know and see if we can get you a link to it. Okay, so. Um, there we go. I'll just get rid of these bits. So with the garlic, it really depends on how much you guys want to add. You can add as little or as much as you want. Okay, and to, to grate our garlic, we can either use a fine grater, you can put it in a pestle and mortar, or use a microplane. Um, so I'm going to use my microplane today, putting it against my board. So that I'm using my board um, to give me a bit of resistance. So this is raw garlic, of course, you guys know that. But um, what I mean by that is that the flavour of the garlic will be really, really strong. It will be really, really strong. So do bear that in mind. And just remember, you know, this is a salad. You guys can um, make it and try it. And then you can adjust it if you want to. So basically we want the garlic to be as small as possible, as fine as possible, because um, we want it to be completely in amongst all of our salad. So we don't want chunks of garlic. No, 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 no. We want it to be throughout, throughout the salad. Okay, so that's our garlic. We will mix that in in a moment. But we also need to add the juice of one lemon. So I'll add that in now. And actually, I'll see if I can move you guys over to this view so that you can see how I'm doing this. Okay, so when I squeeze my lemon, I have my hands underneath it, um, but my fingers are slightly parted. So that means that I catch any seeds that come out, but the juice goes down. And I don't ever use... Um, a juicer. I don't ever use a juicer. And in fact, some of my students get a bit annoyed at me because they come over and they say, oh, have you got a, a lemon juicer so that I can juice this a lemon? I'm like, these are lemon juice. <laughs> so you use your hands. Yeah, some people aren't that impressed by that. But you know, it is, it is better just to use your hands, I think, if you can, if you can. You know, if you have mobility issues, of course, then use whatever you need to use. But one of the things that I like about using my hands with citrus fruit is that you can get all of the juice out. All of the juice out. Whereas with some juices, like, you just can't. You just can't. Um, okay, so Colleen said, I just bought a whole sleeve of garlic. Going to roast it today. <gasps> Oh, oh yeah, and of course, I think you mentioned this before, your stomach can't take raw garlic. Yes, yeah, 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 no, that's absolutely, absolutely understandable. It does have that effect on some people. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse my hands once more. Have 
a look at our minutes to see how that is doing. Okay, so that can actually come out now. So we want this to cool down as quickly as it can so that then we can use it in our salad because you know if we put it into our salad at the moment there we go you can see it a bit better now we put it into our salad at the moment and then what's going to happen is it's going to make all of the these wilt and start cooking essentially with the heat so the best way to cool something down is to give it more space to spread it out so we've got plate here so we can just pop our grain on here and just spread it out as much as possible and this will cool it down quicker there we go oh a rouge says lemons are good for nails too i didn't know that that. Ah, Kate has joined us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, right. Okay, so that is cooling down. So we don't need to rush anything. Um, so we do want this to be uh, cooled down before we put it into our salad. We've got a little bit of salt here, so we can just add a bit of salt. And of course, we've got to mix in this um, garlic and also the lemon juice. And now is a good time to add some extra virgin olive oil. So. If any of you guys don't want to add oil, you really don't have to. Um, I'm going to. Um, if you have some very fruity, flavoursome olive oil, it's really, really good in a dish like this. Really, really good. So the fruitier and the more kind of strong tasting olive oil, the better, really. Okay, so I'm just going to mush up that garlic and mix it in as well as I can. So as you can see, like strong flavors going on in this, because it's quite a lot of lemon juice. We've got the olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. By the way, mine is extra virgin olive oil, um, not just regular olive oil. So it does have that bitterness to it. And then we've got tons of garlic as well in there. So, I mean, just, geez, how healthy is this gonna be? <laughs> really, really healthy. Okay, so I am being really careful just to make sure that this is mixed really, really well. Really, really well. And actually, you'll see, you know, I, I didn't put the garlic in when I was blending the leaves because the thing is that if you do that, you'll get bits of garlic. You won't get it to be pureed. And now I'm going to prep my tomatoes. And I'm just going to carefully pick which tomatoes that I'm going to use, okay? So, um... This one is getting a bit soft and it's a bit big. So I know that the flesh is going to be um, quite wet um, and possibly a little bit mushy. So I'm not going to use this one. This, however, is more firm. It's more firm, so I know that the flesh is going to be more firm. And it's the flesh that we want from this. We don't want the seeds. Okay, and so I'm just gonna chop that up and show you how to do that but I just wanted to um answer Karen's uh comment because she said I made the minute cookies last night really yummy half eaten photo to follow okay right we're just gonna come over here and I'm gonna admit something to you guys so I made two batches of minute cookies on the day that I showed you guys how to make them uh me and Jeff ate them in two days we had <laughs> one whole tray each per day. That's crazy. That's crazy. And so a couple of days ago, as you'll have seen in the community hub, I made some more, but with speculous uh, flavouring. So, you know, it's those um, lovely biscuits that are flavoured with cinnamon and lo loads of other spices. So I made speculous flavour and I made a double batch again, like a whole tray. So you've seen like my trays, like how big they are, like a whole, whole oven tray. Uh, and again, us two days to eat them. I ate seven of them yesterday. I ate seven of them yesterday. That's insane. That's insane. But I must say, like, if you guys haven't tried that recipe already, then please do because it's a healthy treat. It's using millet in a in a really really great way. Um, getting really good grains into your body. Um, and they taste amazing. And they're really crunchy. They're really crunchy. And actually, that is another thing that I want to ask you guys: Was it a cookie or was it a biscuit? 
So what's the difference? Is it a cookie or a biscuit? I think they were more biscuits because they were really crunchy. But but I'll but I'll leave it up to you guys. I'll leave it up to you guys. You guys can discuss that whilst I get on with this. Right, okay, so now I'm going to show you how to cut the um, tomatoes. Um, so cutting tomatoes can always be a little bit difficult um, because you, you need quite a sharp knife. And if your knife isn't sharp enough, then it can really struggle to get through, um, get through the skin. So a couple of pointers. Uh, this bit here is quite hard. So that centre bit is quite hard. So you are more likely to be able to get through here as your first cut rather than here. That is going to be a bit more difficult. Um, you can also make a first incision if your tomato is quite difficult to get through with the point of your knife and then use the rest of your knife to go through it. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. The other thing as well is that um, you can uh, press them. I don't know if you can see me doing that. Just press it a bit more like that firmly when you cut through. And so that will encourage it, the knife to go through because basically it makes it, makes it more kind of plump and it gives it a bit of resist, you know, a bit of pushback on the knife. So you can do it that way. It really depends on how sharp your knife is. So either we can do it that way, which is uh, me pushing it together, giving it a bit more resistance against the knife, or if that isn't working for you because maybe your knife is, is too dull there, then you can just use the tip of the knife. So you've got that little, slit there and then go in with the rest of it okay I hope that that made sense let me know if it didn't um, so Gloria says that she can't get millet at a local supermarket see I think that with that recipe some of you guys actually um, did that recipe without millet didn't you you had you made like some substitutions so if you could give Glory some advice on the substitutions that you made uh, for millet and how they turned out. Okay. Um, now, with the tomato, I am cutting out the seeds. We don't want the seeds. I know that that might seem a bit wasteful, but this type of salad, you only want the flesh. We only want the flesh. So cut those seeds out. We go and we'll come to a different angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, right. So I've got my knife and then I just slide it underneath these seeds. And then when it gets to the end, I just tip it back. And there we go. We've got our seeds out. And there will be seeds left in there. So we just need to get rid of those. Go and once again, so holding it um, at the this tip, so where the stem would come out, um, holding that with my left hand. I am right-handed, by the way. And then sliding the knife underneath the seeds. There we go. And then we can get rid of those seeds. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. So again, picking one that is fairly firm. And. Actually, I'm going to get you guys up here so that you can see. Okay, so holding it either side, giving it a bit of a squeeze, and then easier for my knife to go through. And you want to get all of that water out as well, because the water will dull down the flavour, the other flavours that we've got in this dish going on. And we don't want to dial it down at all. Uh, we want lots of flavour in this recipe. Um, okay, so uh, David says cookies have more sugar than biscuits. Do they? I'm not, I'm not sure that that's the rule. I'm not sure that that's the rule. See, I thought that uh, cookies uh, were a bit chewy, were a bit chewy. And that's how, um, like in the UK, we don't really do cookies right. Because, okay, so this is what an American person told me. They said that uh, in the US, cookies are a bit chewy. Um, and we don't really have like properly like chewy cookies in this country. So, so they said, so they said. So it'd be interesting to know what you guys think of it. So I always thought like biscuits were kind of like more crunchy things. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna cut these into small pieces. There we go. We just want little little pieces like that. Little squares. And as soon as they're ready, we can just pop them into our salad. Okay, and that slice that I'm doing, I'm really pushing down quite hard because the last thing that we're gonna be hitting will be the skin. And tomato skin is tough. It is tough. You know, it's... There we go. Okay. So, Colleen says, I make all my cookies chewy. So, yeah, I think, I think that that might be the difference. I think that that might be the difference. So, actually, Colleen, uh, did you make the millet cookies as well? I know that Sarah did. So, Sarah, how were yours? Were yours uh, crunchy or were they a bit chewy? And so it does take a little bit more time to prepare your tomatoes this way rather than just cutting them into eighths or quarters or whatever and you know leaving all the seeds and the stem in. But this is Dabuli the way that you do it. Definitely. Maximum flavour with this dish, please. Oh, Colleen said that she did make the the millet cookies. Okay. But the millet cookies are quite interesting because, you know, you just cook them for less time and then they're a bit chewy. <laughs> so, and you cook them for more time and then they're, um, they're firmer, they're crisper. Uh, thank you, Doug, for sharing that. Okay. <laughs> right. So uh, we've got our tomato in there and then we will do a couple of these radish. And as I said, I just really like the colour of these with the green and the red um, and I'm going to cut these into pieces that are around the same size as the tomato. You guys can use cucumber if you want or even you know spring onion or there, there are a few like different things that you could use. Uh, watermelon radish if you can find it is amazing um, so but yeah, that, that is getting to be more common. I actually saw it in a UK supermarket for the first time uh, earlier this year. So watermelon radish is very, very beautiful. And if you haven't um, seen it before, then do have a look and see, see what it's like. Because it is very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Really bright pink. I mean, it basically looks like watermelon. So, there you go. We've got our tomato and our radish in there and now this is nice and cool so we can pop some of our grains in here so you don't need a huge amount of grains for a taboule it isn't meant to be like a grain heavy dish it just gives it a bit more body it makes it more of a meal basically and i don't want the white to overtake the green so i haven't put all of it in i really want lo lots and lots of greens in this so we get loads of great great nutrition right there we go that's our salad let me just see if we've got any more questions or comments about cookies um okay so joss said i always thought cookies are thicker and can be gooey in the inside whereas biscuits are hard and more often store bought. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like in the UK, like we're more of like a biscuit country. Um, it's only more recently that we've done like the cookie thing. Um, so, so you know, a lot of like biscuits used to be homemade. They used to be homemade. Um, so Colleen said, in the US, biscuits are like rolls. You have them with a meal with vegan butter. Oh my gosh, this, this is. This is very confusing. Uh, Maxine, welcome, welcome. We're just talking about uh, were our millet cookies, cookies or biscuits? I'm thinking they're biscuits. Uh, but then that's gonna be confusing for our, our American people. David said to make a cookie more chewy, you need to add more sugar. No, not necessarily, not necessarily. There aren't, necess there aren't always like these like hard and fast rules because it really depends on what is in the rest of the recipe. Um, okay, so. 
Joss said, or take it out of the oven earlier. I think you were talking about cookies there. Oh yeah, 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 to make them more chewy. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I uh, can see, I can see a, 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 um, a joke there. I'm not gonna read that out. Not yet, I wanna see the punchline first. Um, anyway, let's go over here <laughs> and we're almost, almost, almost ready. Um, let's bring our carrots over. And so this is, I think, really, really, really pretty. A really pretty salad and something that can make um, a buffet, um, you know, can really add to a buffet. Um, and it's one of these salads where like when we're, we're using the whole of the carrot so you can actually see what it is. We're not trying to make it look like anything else. Okay. And I'm just placing them on here in a specific way. I should probably tell you why I'm doing this really. Um, so I want the bigger ones to be in the middle and then going out to smaller ones gradually. And I'm doing them alternate ways as well. And this is just something that helps with the appearance of it, makes it look a bit prettier. There we go. And also I'm, I'm making sure that this browned part is showing as well. Right. There we go, guys. Okay. That, that is our spiced carrot with tabbouleh. Very pretty, uh, very summery dish, despite it being roasted carrots. Um, so I do have a request here from uh, Denise who says, please taste, please taste it, Chateau. Okay. <laughs> I will get my, um, I don't know if, I, if you guys can see this. There we go, can you see that? That's my special, my special fork. Um, I've also, I've actually got three. So I've got one that says vegan, one that says chef, and one that says day. <laughs> I know, right? Really, really nice. I'm very, very excited to have this for lunch. Mmm. It's got so much flavour to it. Honestly, so much flavour. Really, really lovely. Really fresh and vibrant. Exactly the type of food that I really love to make. Food with loads and loads of flavour in it. Loads of flavour. Okay. Paul quite rightly says carrots are cheap to buy as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they are, they are. Um, and Justine says, Jewel, we need recipes to use up beetroot. Okay. Okay, yeah, we can definitely do some beetroot recipes. Um, and let me just see if we've got any more questions before I go. Um, I hope that you guys who have been cooking long at home have had, you know, great success with this. Probably still cooking, uh, but please do take a photo before you eat it and uh, pop it into our group. That would be absolutely great, absolutely great. Uh, a big, big, big thank you to Louisa for today, who will soon be going to Sicily. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous at all. Nick is going to France. Louisa is going to Sicily. Like two places where you know that the fruits and vegetables are going to be amazing amazing um so yes thank you to louisa for all of her hard work um okay so Aru says my mouth is so watery good 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 george said delicious can't wait to make it david thank you for the green heart um thank you for all the love and comments and also for sharing all of this as well so um i have seen that a few of you have been sharing our lives in the veganuary group and other vegan groups and that is absolutely amazing uh, because the more people that we can get to come along and cook with us the better because we are aiming for 100 at one point I don't know when, but we're gonna get a hundred of you cooking all at the same time, okay? Okay. Um, 
uh, Arunia says, I want to ask about the chef course in July. Okay, so uh, we, are, we are launching our first pro chef course as an online course. So we have been running this course for about a year and a half now. So, um, uh, but it's only been in person. So we actually have a place that we use up in London. We're running this in-person course um, and we've taught, oh my gosh, it must be about like 60 students by now. So 60 people who have wanted to change from a career that they usually didn't like, um, they, were, they were dissatisfied with to becoming um, a vegan chef of some sort. Um, and so the course that we teach is designed to kickstart their career and get you to uh, take that first step into a career as a vegan chef. But there are loads of different jobs as vegan chefs nowadays and it isn't just about working in kitchens. You don't have to be worried about working in a shouty kitchen. Um, you know, there's lots of jobs for recipe developers and private chefs and caterers and stuff like that. So quite a few of our students go into lots of different things, not just in regular kitchens. Um, but you can find out more information about that on our website. Um, we've got the last few places remaining and Justine is doing the course, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited about. Um, and also our assistant, um, Ingrid, will be doing the course too. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody for joining me. Um, I'll let you pop off now and please do have a lovely day.